Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks, to give him all the praise, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day, hallelujah, that the Lord has made. And I mean every last one of us. I mean every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in. We're serving an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy, my brothers and sisters. Yes, yes, hallelujah. He is so worthy to be praised. Every day is a day to always rejoice in the Lord. To always to enter into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. Always thanking him for what he has done. Always thanking him, thanking him for what he has done in your life. Always thanking him for giving you another chance, another opportunity each and every day. Always to glorify him. Always to magnify him. Always to exalt his holy name. Because at the end of the day, God got your back, my sisters. At the end of the day, God got your back, my brothers. And I know we're human. And I know sometimes we're going to stress out. But God say, cast all your problems, all your anxieties on me. Because I am the one that care for you. I am the one that can help you. I am the one that has the solution to your problems. Whatever it is that you are going through right now, whatever it is that you are facing right now, Jesus still wants to hear from you. But our problem is we always want to put Jesus on the background. We always want to put social media in our business. We always want to put our homeboys and our homegirls in our business. We always want to put family members and in-laws and co-workers and people at the church in our business. Like they have the answer. Like they are the, the great Messiah. Like they can help us out of that situation. The only person that can help you, my sisters, the only person that can help you, my brothers, is Jesus. So why not go to him first? Why not talk to him what's going on? Because he already know what's going on. He already knew what was going to happen before it even happened. You know what you're going through right now. You know what you're facing right now. Go and take it to the master right now. He's listening. He's aware. He knows what's going on. And that's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us. And he has it in the palm of his hands and he is working everything out to his perfect will. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home or to your life or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today. Please do so. His arms are open wide. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do right now. We thank you, Father God, for your guidance and your direction. We thank you, Father God, how you order our steps. We thank you, Father God, because you always make yourself available for those who cry at your name. For those who call at your name. For those who seek you, Father God. For those who kneel down before the throne each and every day. Because your word tells in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19. Well, two or more gather in your name, hallelujah. There you are in the midst. So, Father God, as we are praying right now, we know that you're in the midst of this prayer right now. Father God, we know every prayer has been heard, every prayer has been listened to, and every prayer has been delivered. It might not come when we want to, but it will come on time. So, Father God, I'm just asking you right now today, Father God, for you to continue to have your way with your sons and your daughters, even myself right now. Lay your hands on us right now today, God. Oh, God, you continue to move us and you continue to use us, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love that you continue to give us. 
We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for how patient you are with us, God. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive, this powerful message right now today, Father God, that's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Heavenly Father God, that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, giving you all thanks, giving you all praise, giving you all glory. Today is the day, Father God, that you make all things new. Today is the day, Father God, that you make all things possible, Father God, for those who believe in you, for those that have hope in you, for those that have trust in you, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, let your will be done today. Let your words go out and should not return by void today, Father God. This is your time. This is your moment. Glory hallelujah then i know for a fact that you're about to show up and i know for a fact that you're about to show out i believe and i declare decree right now today in the mighty name of jesus that someone's going to be healed today someone's going to be delivered today someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today jesus and the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now and you will you shall get all the things all the praise all the glory oh heavenly father god this is your house that house that you built on solid ground, that house that you built on solid foundation, that house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, you are welcome right now. You are invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord, right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to lay hands on every last one of my brothers and sisters right now. I I'm asking you right now, they Father God, to lift their spirits up right now. I'm asking you right now, they Father God, to speak a word to my brothers and sisters. Send them an angel right now. Send them a sign right now. I'm praying that you send them confirmation right now. I'm praying, Father God, that you will send them more discernment right now. I'm praying right now, they God, that you will put a smile on their face right now, today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father, Father God, just let them know that they ain't got to worry no more. Let them know, Father God, they ain't got to stress no more. Let them know, Father God, that they can rest in your words and they can rest in your promise. Of God, that you already got the situation already handled. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking, I'm praying, Father God, for you to do a new thing in my brother and sister's life right now today, Father God. Glory be to God. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you for a favor. And the favor that I'm asking for, God, is for a blessing for my brothers and sisters, a breakthrough for my brothers and sisters, a miracle for my brothers and sisters, that you will open up a door for my brothers and sisters, that you will send them help right now today, Father God, and my, for my brothers and sisters, that you will send rain right now today for my brothers and sisters, that you will put them at the right place at the right time for my brothers and sisters, that you will send them the help that they need right now today for my brothers and sisters. I'm praying for healing and restoration for my brothers and sisters. I'm praying, Father God, that you that you're gonna show up at any given time for my brothers and sisters. And Father God, I believe in you and I trust in you, Father God. And I declare, I decree that it's already done for every last one of my brothers and sisters right now today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You are invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here on your platform. Right here in my sister's home. Right here in my sister's life. Right here in my brother's home. Right here in my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking to comfort us right now today because you are comforter. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our minds, so we hear your soul still voice. Holy Spirit, I'm asking to move through this place like you know, move before so we catch the Holy Ghost fire. Holy Spirit, please forgive us for grieving you today. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sins today, known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remember our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to always pray, praise, and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters, they one body in Christ. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom of most of all, Jesus. Glory be to God. I am available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and fruit of my lips about you. Now I've got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because 
because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout out your holy name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart at you every day, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I want more, I want more, I want more in you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I have a hunger, that's why I have a thirst for you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. Today's word is, please stay away from me. And some of us right now that we don't understand that people that we was rocking with, some of the people who we thought that we was in a relationship with, even the people who we thought that we supposed to be family. And we wonder why things were not working out with them. We wonder why things was not adding up with them. It's because Jesus knew exactly who they were. Jesus knew their intentions. Jesus knew their motives. Jesus knew their heart. But see, we was looking at things from the outward position, but God was looking at the things from the inward position, and Jesus said, they have a jealous spirit. That is a nasty, nasty, disgusting habit to have towards somebody when somebody has nothing but the utmost love and respect for you. But there's a lot of people that we are rocking with. There's a lot of people who we think is our homeboys and our homegirls. There's a lot of people who we need relationship with. There's a lot of people that are supposed to be our family members. They are secretly jealous of you. They say they want the best for you. They say they happy for you. But deep down in their heart, deep down in their spirit, they're jealous. It's because they're not living the life that you're living. They're jealous because they're not getting recognized like you're getting recognized. They're jealous because nobody's talking about them like they're talking about you. They're jealous because you keep making things happen and happen because you're not doing on your own. It is Jesus that get you to where you need to be at. They're jealous because they thought they can destroy you, but God kept building you up right there in front of their face. And that is a nasty, disgusting habit to have. And you wonder why they never want to come around you. You wonder why they never want to come in your house because they think that you got more in your house than what they have in their house. They don't want you to outdo them. They don't want you to outshine them. And when you when a person act like that, they have a jealous spirit about them. And Jesus had to start cutting people out of your life. And you wonder why Jesus was removing these people. And you wonder why y'all was not getting along. You wonder why things were not adding up and seeming right. You're like, well, why are they jealous of me? We're supposed to be homeboys. We're supposed to be homegirls. Why are they jealous of me? We're supposed to be in a relationship. Why are they jealous of me? We're supposed to be married. It's because they are serving two masters. You can't serve two masters. You can't have a jealous spirit and praise Jesus too. You can't have a jealous spirit and always want to talk about Jesus too because you lie somewhere. You either you love one or you hate the other one. So if you got a jealous spirit and you're still talking about God, okay, which one do you love? You got to love the jealous spirit because the jealous person would never, never be jealous of another jealous person. It's because they jealous because it's that nasty habit that they have inside of them. And they need to be delivered, my sisters. They need to be delivered, my brothers. Because when somebody have a jealous spirit like that, my brothers and sisters, there's no doubt what that person might do to you. Look at Cain and Abel. Wasn't he jealous of his own brother? Look what he did. He took his own brother out because of jealousy. God had to keep the devil out of the kingdom because why? He was jealous. He was selfish. A lot of people God had to kick out of your life. God had to remove some people out of your life because they were like a cancer. They were like a fungus. They were starting to spread. And God said, no, you're not going to spread that nasty disease. You're not going to spread that nasty habit on my son and daughter because my son and my daughter don't get like that. They don't rock like that. That is you having that jealous and nasty and malice spirit inside of you. And when the Lord sees that, he knows that, he will make sure that certain things will not work out. And you wonder why that relationship didn't work out? Because somebody was jealous. You wonder why that friendship didn't work out? Somebody was secretly jealous of you. And I know that you spend so much time with this person. And I know that you wanted the best for this person. I know you. Had, I know for a fact that you even seen a future with this person. But God said, no, nah, there ain't no future here. You think it's one. But God says, not one. And I'm going to show you. 
I'm going to prove it to you. And I know that you was, your, your mind was bald because you couldn't understand why this person so jealous of you because you always, you always have attentive towards them and their activities. You always went around their house, but you had to take a step back and say, you know what? Why is so much I can come to your house and hang around with you, but you can come to my house and hang around me? We don't stay that far from each other. And you, and, and, and you couldn't understand what it was. And Jesus said they were jealous. They were jealous because you might have a lamp more than them, a shade more than them, a fork, a spoon more than them. But it was okay for you to go to their house. But no, they didn't want you to have more than them. They didn't want you to be on top. They didn't want you to get all the shine, and they weren't getting the shine. They didn't want you to get all the recognition, and they were not getting the recognition. They, didn't, they want people to talk and brag about them what they have, but they couldn't stand when somebody was talking about you. They couldn't stand when somebody was bragging about you. They couldn't stand how you were still standing out, and they were still in the background. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but this word for somebody right now today. Jesus, I had to cut them out of your life. I had to remove them because they had a jealous spirit. Jesus, I had to get them out of the way because they had a nasty habit. And I didn't want that habit to come around you at all. And Jesus said, you got to thank me for me, for, for, for me to remove these people out of your life. And you got to say, thank you, Jesus. Stay away from me. If you're going to be jealous of because I got this and I got that, You'll be jealous if God gave me more. And that's why God held your blessing the way that he held it, my brothers and sisters. That's why he held your breakthrough the way he did. That's why he held your miracle because he already knew that you were going to share with him. He already knew that you were going to share with her. And the reason that you were share with him because you were showing your love. You didn't have that nasty habit like they had it. And you don't understand by God when he gave it to you, it was no, it was no telling what they would have did to you. You have not been able to, 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 to enjoy your blessing. You have not been able to enjoy your breakthrough, your miracle, because you will hang with somebody who got a nasty habit. And whenever somebody got a nasty habit like that, they'll take you out, my brothers and sisters. Quick, fast, and a hurry. Oh, yes. The boy God said, uh, I can't give you this because this person right here that you kicking with, that you rocking with, that you want to have a relationship with, they got a nasty habit about them. They saying that they love me. They mouth saying it, but God said, but their heart is jealous. God said they mouth saying it, but their heart have an envious, an envious spirit. God said they mouth is saying it, but their heart have a malice spirit. God said, I can't give you this when you're around these people who have a nasty habit. I can't give it to you like that. Don't be mad at me, but I want you to thank me. Don't cuss me out, but I want you to thank me. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bible to James 3. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. And we're going to finish off at Matthew 6, verse 24. That's James chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. And we're going to finish off at Matthew 6, verse 24. If you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. James chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life. By deeds done in humility that comes with wisdom. But if you harbor bitter, envy, and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it's earthly, unspiritual of what the devil. That means somebody have a jealous spirit. That means they have the devil inside them. They rock with him. They're on his side. They're on his team. Ain't no if. There's no end. There's no but about it. Because it is in my word. The word of God says it right here. From heaven but it's earthly and spiritually of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. Okay. Wasn't the devil jealous of us? Wasn't the devil jealous of God because he wanted everything God had? Wasn't the devil jealous of God because he didn't want God to share the blessing with nobody else? The devil was selfish. He was envious and he had a mad spirit. So God said, stay away from me, stay away from my people. So God had to kick him out. 
Sometimes God got to keep people out of your life, my sister. God got to keep people out of your life, my brother, for a reason, for a purpose, because they have a nasty habit. They got a real nasty habit. That's why he did it. He said, I cannot have this and tolerate this arranged for my child. My child don't get down like this. My child don't rock like this. But something about you, it is, is not right. And see, we might can't understand it. We might not see it. But God will open your eyes and let you see the reason why he did what he did. Because the person that we was with, they had a nasty habit about themselves. Are you following what I'm saying? I turn that back to Matthew 6. And we're going to read verse 24. Matthew 6. And we're going to read verse 24. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. No one can serve two masters. Either you're going to love one or you're going to hate the other one. How can you say that you love God? How can you sit there and praise God? How can you sit there and worship God, but you are jealous of your own brothers? That you are jealous on your own sisters? Who you see each and every day face to face, but you never saw God, period. How can you, no one can serve two masters? Either you're going to love God for who he is, or you're going to love the jealous spirit, your brother, the devil, for what, he get, what, for what he do and what his practices are. You can't be both. You can't have one foot in heaven. You can't have the other foot in hell. Either you're going to be rocking with God all the way, or you're going to rock with your brother the other way. Which one is going to be? Because a lot of y'all right now today, you're so confused, you're trying to rock with God and trying with the enemy too. It don't get down like that. It don't work that way. I'm sorry to tell you that. And that's why God never gave you what he needed to give you around the people that you was in because they have it that they had. And I ain't talking about no habit that you smoking because you can quit the smoking. I ain't talking about a habit because you were drinking. You can stop the drinking if you go to AA meeting, right? I ain't talking about that habit because you smoking crack or whatnot because you can get help from that. But when you got a habit of a jealous spirit, that is a habit that you need to go to God, that you need to be delivered. There's a lot of people right now they have not went to God and asked God to deliver them from the nasty habit that they have inside of them. God is the only one that can remove that habit from that nasty, disgusting person right now. That's why God didn't give you what you wanted right then and there because he knew the person that you was with, the person that you was rocked with, they would have took you out the moment God would have gave it to you because they had a habit about themselves. Are you following what I'm saying? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or who will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. You can't serve, you cannot serve God and be envious. You can't serve God and be jealous. You can't serve God and have a mad spirit. You can't serve God and, and, and be complaining because somebody got a spoon or a fork more than you. You can't do it. So which one are you gonna rock with? Are you gonna rock with God or you gonna rock with your buddy? Because a lot of people rock that day, God already know who they rocking with. God already know who side they on. God already know who team they on. And that's what God was preparing. Protect you. That's what God had to cut the fungus. That's what God had to cut the cancer. That's what God had to remove some people out of your life. He had to keep them out of your life and say, stay away from my son. Don't you dare come back. Stay away from my daughter. Don't you dare come back. Because God says, hallelujah, they had a nasty habit. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But today you got to thank God for removing people out of your life. You got to thank Jesus. Say, Jesus, thank you for cutting them out of my life. I couldn't understand what was going on. I couldn't see. But when the fear scales were moved from your eyes, God said they were jealous of you the whole time. They could, you can't love somebody and be jealous too. You can't be your friend and be jealous too. You can't be in a relationship with somebody and be jealous too. Either, either it was real or it was fake. And God said that friendship, it was fake from the get-go. That relationship was fake from the get-go. And God said that's why I was shutting the doors. That's why God said nothing was happening. God said there was, no, there was no transaction happening in that friendship, that relationship, because it was fake. It was not real. He said, there's no way I was going to I was gonna bless that friendship with somebody that was fake. There's no way I was going to bless that relationship when I knew that it was fake. Because somebody had a habit. Somebody had secrets. Somebody had motives. And the moment if I would have gave it to you, they was going to take you out. You couldn't see it, but I saw them for who they are. God said, I see them all on social media. Talking about how they love me. Always talking about this. Always talking about that. But how? 
Can you talk about me that good when you never saw me, but you hate and you're jealous and you envious of matters of your own brother and sister or your own boyfriend or girlfriend? How can that be that so you're a fake, you're a phony, you're a fraud? You need to get yourself together because you have a habit about yourself that it need to be cleansed. You have a habit about yourself that need to be wiped away. You have a habit about yourself, glory be to God, that need to be delivered. You got a habit about yourself. You got a habit about yourself. And you wonder why when you put all these God quotes on social media, everybody overlooking it and everybody liking it. Because the word of God said you should know them by their fruit. And the reason why people not like it because they say, I know who he is. I know who she is. I know how they get down because they're really not about their God life, but they sure is about their envious life. They sure is about their jealous life. And they sure is about their malice life. Hallelujah. You got to say, stay away from me. I see how you rock now. I see how you get down now. You can reach out to me all day long, but God don't show me who you really are. God don't show me how you really get down. God don't show me how you really rock. So now that I know who you are now, hey, stay 10 feet away from me. You ain't got to have COVID, but I don't want you around me because I know that you got a habit about yourself. And that habit has no room over here in my house or my facility at all. Glory be to God. My point I'm making today. You got to thank Jesus for removing the trash that was around you. Thank Jesus for cutting that cancer and that fungus away from you. Thank Jesus for removing people who, had, who, who did not have the right motives, who didn't have the right attentions for you. Say, thank you, Jesus, for getting them out of my life. I thought you, I thought you were being mean to me, but God was actually watching over you. He was actually protecting you. He was actually cutting you through all of it all. And if you know God was doing that for you, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody need to give Jesus some thanks right now. Somebody need to give Jesus some praise right now. Somebody, glory, hallelujah, need to give Jesus some glory because I say, thank you, Jesus, because I couldn't see it. But when I read out who that person was, I say, thank you, Jesus. I see why it didn't work out. I say, thank you, Jesus. I see why you didn't bless with the blessing because you knew that person was going to take me out. If they were jealous of the small things, glory be to God, they would have killed me of the big things. And I want to say, thank you, Jesus, for not giving it to me when I was with this person. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And if this word moved through today, and if it touched your spirit today, go and hit Jesus' like button right now. Go and hit the subscribe button to us well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying that simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in our life for another day. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchanged hands and please not let it go. Continue to keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and perfecter of your faith. Continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer will help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm seven minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. And Jesus, glory, holy, mighty name. I love every last one of y'all. Amen.